Hello, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following, liking, sharing our videos. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Today, I wanted to come here and talk about soul ties. I've never talked about soul ties before. I don't know why I've never talked about it, but I'm talking about it now. One of the reasons why I'm talking about it is because I'm doing a lot of soul tie work right now. I'm doing a lot of uh, candle work, doing a lot of trying to heal some of the transgenerational trauma that was in, that's in my family. For those of you who have been following me, you know that I am a survivor of trauma. And so my family is caught up in this karmic loop, and I have been working to stop it. It stops with me. I've did a lot of healing on my work on myself, and I'm still doing a lot of healing on myself. And lately, I've been doing a lot of soul tie work. So I wanted to come here and talk about soul ties from a man and woman perspective and from a family perspective, too, because some of us have these unhealthy relationships. And we can't shake them and we don't know why. And you may have a, a soul tie. You know, when a person can control how you feel, then yeah, you may have a soul tie. So I wanted to come here and talk about it. I'm going to talk about it first from a man and woman point of view. Let's dive in here and let's look at my notes here. A spirit, a man and woman soul tie is when a spiritual connection between two people have been physically intimate with each other or have had intense emotional spiritual association or relationship with each other. Now, this usually you usually get that soul tie with the man and woman during a spiritual experience. Our brains produce a dopamine, the same chemical that feeds a gambling addiction, your chocolate cravings, your you know, just your junkies need for a fix. Dopamine is often described as a feel-good chemical of the brain, and it plays a major role in our lives, good and bad. This is why, you know, former boyfriends and girlfriends were like drugs to some of us. You know, if you went through that obsession st stage where you just couldn't shake a boyfriend or a girlfriend, there could have been a soul tie there. And this is why some people, you know, they feel like they can't live without that boyfriend, girlfriend, or significant other. They are addicted to the high. Now, I see this a lot uh, in the, the nar you know, when someone is in love with a narcissist, they do the love bum and they say and do, you know, the things that you want them to do. And it, you just feel so great. It's like a drug, you know. And so you're just addicted to that person and you can't shake, shake them. So I see that's very common in a narcissistic relationship when you're dealing with a spouse or a significant other that is a narcissist. A lot of this soul tie stuff, you'll see that. I see that too, that it ties in between the empath and the narcissist as well. So there's a lot of soul tie work that needs to be done if you're still experiencing some intense emotions, you know, acting like you can't live without that person, then you can do some soul tie work. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. But let's go on to soul ties in family. Because some of us have family that we want, we don't particularly like. We don't know how to separate ourselves from it. We don't know what's really going on with it, why they make they why they make us feel the way we do. And you might have an unhealthy soul tie with family. Now there is a such thing as healthy soul ties. Those are normal. They come with boundaries. You know, those are healthy soul ties. But we're today we're talking about unhealthy soul ties. Today I want to highlight the dangers of soul ties that come from from other manipulative controlling relationships. Soul ties can be created. When one person exerts an unnatural, ungodly influence over you, resulting in a negative, damaging influence over your mental, emotional, and spiritual health, and can harm your physical health as well. So when you have somebody controlling your emotions, putting your body in a fight-or-flight mode, or creating a lot of anxiety, that puts stresses on your body, therefore having a physical impact on you, on your physical body. You know, So be careful with that. We have seen family dynamics where a parent manipulates, controls a child with such a spirit of intimidation 
domination that the child suffers in adulthood. This influence is so powerful and harmful that as an adult, this grown-up child struggles to accomplish adult responsibility in his adult relationships. These mothers and fathers have controlled family relationships with a power akin to witchcraft. I'm going to get in there a little bit. Give me a minute now. I'm going to explain this to you. This is not that good wicker. This is that bad wicker. This is that dark magic, that black magic. Witchcraft means illegitimate control. Sadly, many parents don't know the boundaries between healthy parenting and unhealthy controlling their children. In fact, this could be a dark attachment behind their energy and their desperate need for emotional dependency. The mother is using you the mother or father is using a spirit of manipulation, coercion, and seduction. Now let me get into the uh, the witchcraft thing again, the black magic, dark magic, because that's what that is. With my experience, I, I can only speak, I'm gonna speak from my experience because this is what I've experienced, and I, I've I've heard other people talked about it too. They really validated my experience, what I was having with my parent, my mother. I am a scapegoat. I am very empathic and she knew that. So I was very aware of her emotional abuse and called her out on it. And I began to rebel. She didn't like that. So she initially taught my other siblings, younger siblings, had emotionally abused me. Again, I'm very empathic. I absorb that. I do cry. I feel that. I hurt. And she knew that. So she taught them how to verbally and mentally and emotionally abuse me. She wasn't, you know, at some point she was a physical. She was a physical abuser. But she was, her main thing was the emotional abuse. She was... That was one of that's one of her favorite things is emotional abuse. I ran away from home at a very young age, trying to escape a lot of that. She has pitted, you know, my sisters against each other. They do not treat me well at all. You know, they don't treat me well at all. They they mimic her her behavior. It's uncanny. You know, it's uncanny how they mimic her behavior. And I don't think they really have no idea about why they do it. I had to call my sister out on some of that behavior. I don't think she was aware of it, but I was like, did you ask yourself where you get that from? You know, you know, so they're not even, I don't know if she's aware of it, that she's doing it. But like I said, I've, I've been empathic since I was a, a small child. So I was able to call her out on it. So I started running away from home between the ages of 12 you know, 12 years old, I started running away. And at 15, I moved out. You know, going back here and there. But at 15, I decided to, you know, I was just wanted to get the hell out of there because it was too much because I became suicidal. My grades began to decline. You know, it was just too much for me. I had to get out of there because I felt like I was just going to explode. So I got out of there. I married very early and got out of there. So, and you can feel... That that energy that they're channeling to you because that with with a narcissist what you're having is you have a a human you got a vampire that's siping the life out of you they're they are emotionally feeding off you there are such things as as vampires and this narcissism is one of them all right some people call it the Jezebel spirit as well. But they're feeding off your energy because they just suck the life out of you. I mean, they just, they do. And it, it has an impact on your physical body as well. But you can do something about it. And that's exactly what I've been doing here lately. I've been doing a lot of uncrossing because every time she does that, every time she speaks like that, she's she's uh practicing, she's cursing the generations. She's cursing a generation. This already goes back three generations. But the more she does this and she practices it with the siblings, they're cursing the generations more and more, whether they're aware of it or not. They're practicing black magic. And it has accumulated. She's worked with this attachment so long that when I went no contact with her, that attachment started attacking my home. It started breaking down, you know, appliances in my home breaking down my car and my home, I had to really start uh, doing some saging and combating to get it get it out away from me, you know. And 
I'm doing some uncrossing work now because she's still doing it. So I'm doing a, a lot of uncrossing work on her and me and me, the family. I'm doing some uncrossing work to reverse the effects and to heal a lot of my emotional trauma. And I'll probably be doing this on and off oof, probably for a couple of years because of the, the, the severity of what has been done. You know, you're caught in this karmic loop and I, me being the ancestor that's trying to correct it for the future generations so we don't go, go and keep repeating the same cycle because it stops with us once we become aware of it, all right? Now, whether or not she wants to get out of the karmic loop, that's on her. I can't make her get out of the karmic loop, especially when she has attached herself to this thing because I know it's there because when I called her out on what she was and what she was doing, this thing starts speaking to me through her. It let me know that it was trying to destroy me and that it's been feeding on me all these years. Now, is she aware of it? I don't, you know, part of me say, yeah, and then part of me say, no, you know, but I have found it very hard for her not to be aware of it with the conversations that I've had with her. I think she's very aware of it, but let me move on. While we share a spiritual chords with one another, this goes a step further when we make genuine connections with other beings. Now, there's healthy, like I said, there's healthy soul ties too. You'll see those too. But those come with boundaries, love, and respect. They don't come with a lot of abuse, coercion, and manipulation, and domination. That's not a healthy soul tie. Some believe that these cords connect to the via solar plexus chakras of two people. When you have a partner, a close family member, a good friend, this connection becomes stronger and can sometimes become visible. It has been described as a sort of dark blue tunnel of energy. These cords provide a channel for energy, thoughts, and emotions to travel through. They keep you on a similar speed of vibrational energy to those you share your strong, strongest connection. So like I said, we have this energy cord. It's an umbilical cord with our parents. With me, I have it with my parent. And so I know with me, when I come in contact with her, how I know, because how I know it was affecting me, this core, this 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 bad energy core that we got, this soul tie, because I get anxiety. I, my vibrations lower every time I think of her, I have to come in contact with her. So I know it's a bad soul tie that I need to disconnect because she's channeling this dark energy to me. And they do that purposely. Because they have to feed. They need your, your good energy to feed off of. All right? And it doesn't last that long, the good energy that they cite from you, because they got to go to the next person and cite their good energy as well. Like I said, they're energy vampires. That, that's what you're dealing with. You know, it's very wicked when you think about it. All right? Cutting course isn't limited to course between people, animals, or higher beings. Spiritual psychic cords can also be connected to past situations. They are like lighthouses or beacons that forces you to relive an event that is heavy with emotion. That's where my PTSD come in at. Like I say, it I heal in layers. So on top of healing past events and traumas, I'm healing this as well. So I'm always working on my spiritual body. Excuse me. I'm always working on myself, staying aware all the time. So that's very important for me. Unfortunately, while these can be positive moments, they tend to be negative. Perhaps you were involved in a traumatic event. They create a channel of energy and that's the reason they need to be cut. So you'll see people talk about cutting cords, cutting etheric cords. And you can also, with me, I can feel that cord. I can see it with my third eye intuitively. Uh, the way I see my cord, it is a slug. The, the cord I have with my toxic parent, it is, it's, it's got a lot of sluggish. It's like black sludge, like black mud. It's a, it's an etheric cord full of that, and it's really, really thick. I can feel it. All right, I can see it with my third eye, and I can feel it. All right, for those of you, you may be different, but like I said, I'm very empathic, so I feel and pick up many things. All right. Uh, let, where was I at? If you are no longer close with this person, 
or one of you has lost heart or gone down a dark path, these energies transfer to the other. Like I said, they, they transferring you. They taking your energy, exchanging your energy. Before you know, you end up acting like behaving just like them, like the toxic person. If you're not careful, they're totally kind of spiritually stealing your identity. That's basically your authentic self. They are stealing it for themselves. It's scary. It's scary once you think about it. But it can be corrected as well. So don't get, you know, don't, don't get frightened or alarmed. I'm, you know, it can be corrected as well. The same goes for past experiences. If you can't let go of the negative connection, it weighs you down. Cutting cords may be the option. There are telltale signs as to when a spiritual cutting may be necessary. There are some signs that you can that your connection is creating emotional, physical, spiritual problems. Some of the more obvious signs are obsessive thoughts, arguing, reliving the thoughts in your head. You may find that even when you're busy doing something, the same thoughts appear in your mind. You may start suffering from insomnia. I had insomnia. So I did a lot of healing, but I don't have insomnia anymore. Thank God for that. You know, thank you know, thank the higher power for that. Thank my spirit guides for that because I did so much, you know, healing on myself that the insomnia is 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 gone. So oh th I thank the universe. I thank God. I thank my spirit guides for that. Thank the ancestors for that. So I did a lot of healing on myself. So I've made a lot of progress. And you can too if this is going on with you. Or being overwhelmed by anger and sadness. Now, you know, with my trauma and PTSD, I, I go from sadness to anger all the time because there's a lot of grieving going on. Because I'm grieving, you know, not having that parental love that I deserved, you know. So there, that's a lot of that going on is too. I stay aware. I stay grounded. And that's getting better as, as well. Those suffering from depression might find, find that they enter into it more often and struggle to get out of it. Basically, if you seem stuck in negative emotions or reliving the past, then the cutting cords is likely to be your best approach, and it is very effective. I'm going to share an experience with you, you know, that's really going to convince you, show you that it's very effective. One thing to be aware of when cutting the cord to break the soul tie is that the person you are breaking the tie with will feel the disconnect as well. They'll feel it. They will feel it. It's not uncommon for them to randomly reach out to you, uh, reach out to connect with you after you've broken the soul tie with the person. They will they will text or call you after you break the soul tie. That's exactly what happened with uh with my mother, when I broke that soul tie last week, she texts me. And my spirit guys is just like, do not respond to the text because you're going to reattach that soul tie, that cord. If you do that, do not respond. Do not respond. She feels that disconnect and she's, she want an emotional response out of you, whether it's good or bad. So do not respond to her because you'll be reattaching the cord. And I did it. I did it. And now she has tried to cope. Now she's trying to manipulate my oldest daughter against me because my oldest daughter still have contact with her. She wants to believe that her grandmother is, is well and that she means well. But she just doesn't understand the trauma, the transgenerational trauma. She doesn't understand narcissistic personality disorder. She doesn't understand some of these spiritual concepts. You know, and don't want to accept that this this is going on with her grandmother. So, you know, she's trying to manipulate her once again. She had a bad dream about my mother the other day because my mother is trying to get her to do something she doesn't want to do. And my daughter is resisting. And she said she had a bad dream about my mother uh, uh, stalking her in a dream. I said, that's your intuition, you know, giving you insight right there. You can either take it or leave it. You know, like I said, this energy is very strong and I've been doing a lot of prayer work, a lot of, of spirit work, altar work on my immediate family, my girls and me. And so I see that, that it's been working because she had that dream. All right. 
it's not a sign that you need to reconnect. It's just the effect of them feeling the soul tie disconnect and not knowing what has happened. They know they feel different, but they don't know what it is. All right. So don't don't reattach it. They're going to call. I don't care if it's been five or six years and out of the blue, they call you because you did, uh, you know, a cut cord cutting. They are going to contact you and it's just going to be weird because they're going to feel a disconnect. They are seeking to reestablish what feels normal to them. They want to get that emotional attachment back. All right. So I didn't want to make this. I didn't want to make this video long. I hope this video was insightful to you. I hope you gained some knowledge behind it. I'm certainly learning more and more as I begin to heal myself. So I thought I would come here and share it with you. But I thank you so much for following us. If you're not a following, uh, following us, subscribe to us right now. Thank you for being here with me today. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.